What's up guys and gals, vapors and vapettes in the entire YouTube universe, Vaping Vigilante coming at you again today. And today I want to shoot another vlog. Uh, there's things I want to ramble about and talk about, reiterate again, show some first impressions, talk about some juice that I have gotten recently, talk about some new equipment and things that's coming up for review. And um, let's see, where should I start? Um, I guess, well, let's start with... Um, Yesterday we had clouds over Dallas here in uh, in Dallas, Texas, and uh, it was just a one day event from 12 to 5, uh, and, and it was a nice um, it was a nice little setting. It wasn't huge. It didn't have you know the huge you know music going on and stuff like that. It was a nice. It, it was what you think of a vape meet being like. And uh, it was it was a lot of fun. We had some uh, hiccups there. Now I was, <clears throat> I'm uh, real good buddies with Steve Sobo from uh, ECA Vape One. Shout out to Steve. He's been under a lot of stress. He was really stressed out trying to get this thing going, but uh, it it went off good. There was a big hiccup in the middle of the day. Um, now when Steve and and Jason from Jason's Juice Joint and all that and Roxanne and everybody who was involved in setting this thing up and all the vendors. Well, when Steve and them were first talking, the, the venue was at Gillies in Dallas, which is kind of a bar, saloon, dance hall, things like that. And it was in one of their one of their uh, banquet rooms or, or ball dancing rooms or whatever you want to call it. They had went over and over with, uh, <clears throat> with Gillies that you're going to have a lot of vapors in here and they're going to be blowing a lot of vapor in here. And is that going to cause any problems with fire alarms and smoke detectors and all that? No, no, that'll be fine. It'll be fine. No problem, whatever. Well, yeah, it did. Um, fire alarms went off. Dallas Fire Department showed up and um, everybody had to stop vaping and they cleared out all of the general public. Then they cleared out all the VIPs and, and uh, vendors and things like that. Got them out of the building because the Dallas Fire Department had to, the fire marshal had to come in and make sure that the building was not on fire. <clears throat> okay, I, I don't understand where the logic of three, four hundred people standing around in a burning building would not indicate or they're standing around inside the building would indicate hey there's no fire it's just vapor but anyway <clears throat> so we had to all go outside for a while and eventually we got to come back in but <laughs> we had to stop vaping yeah that a vape meat we had to stop vaping uh because we'd set the fire alarms off again and um the only people that were allowed to vape were the competitors of the cloud comp while they were doing the cloud competition and uh, my buddy Nick Green ended up winning that cloud comp again. Had some very nice cash and prizes. And um, there was there was a few hiccups during the cloud comp. Uh, talked to some friends and stuff. And there was some uh, some confusion with names and things. And hopefully that will all get straightened out. And some uh, person that may a person that should have advanced didn't advance and things. And, and you you have this drama at cloud comps. Um, and you know, I know it's a headache. I know, I know, Steve, it, it gets a headache with him and with with anybody because when you when you've got a lot of money on the line, you've got a lot of cash and you got a lot of prizes and you've got like two day trips and all that kind of stuff. Well, it it piques interest. People got there. They had sixty spots, and uh, for the cloud comp, and um, so. Uh, Tempers can get high and people can get stressed and stuff because, you know, $1,600, $1,700 in cash to a lot of people, most people, is a, is a good chunk of change and, and can help or can be a lot of play money or can pay bills or, or whatever it does. But, um, you know, it's nothing against Steve and anything because he worked his ass off him and Jason and Roxanne and, and all and Pip and and Dave Crow from Vapor USA Wholesale and all that they worked their ass off to make this a good one day event and it's hopefully it's just going to keep growing from there but they're still going to try to keep the the vape meat feel not the gigantic you know where you've got all the huge companies there and stuff where you, it, it was it was really nice there was a lot of Texas uh, shops there, a lot of Texas juice makers. There was a lot of uh, a, a lot of that, which which made it feel nice. It, it was it was a more intimate setting, I guess you could say. But I digress. The 
the cloud comp thing. Now, there is talk about a world championship cloud comp. And I've talked with this with uh, my buddy, Nick Green, and and he's kind of keeping up on it and all that. Where they're, We're talking about potential top prizes of $100,000, okay? If you think there's drama in a cloud comp when there's $400, $1,000, $1,500, or whatever on the line and some prizes, can you even fucking imagine the type of drama there could be when you're talking about a hundred thousand dollars on the line okay to some of you out there in the vape world a hundred thousand dollars might not be shit you know when you when you own uh 25 zero mods and you paid a thousand bucks a piece for them okay a hundred thousand to you probably ain't shit that's that's probably what you'd spend on a good lunch i don't know but for a lot of us who live kind of more in the real world or the, you know, limited means, $100,000 could change somebody's life, okay? Um, <clears throat> so you have to get your shit on point, okay? There has to be absolutely clear communication between the judges. If two judges say... Two to the left, two to the right, three to the left, three to the right, whatever. And they're indicating who the winner was of that particular bracket or that particular drawdown. Whoever is documenting that information needs to make sure that they get it right, especially when names are similar. Now, I'm not going to mention any names in this because it's, it's being handled and it was a big oversight. And I don't think anybody meant anything malicious by what happened. It just shit happens. And that's what happens. Um, does it make people feel any better? Maybe not, whatever, but ultimately cloud comps are supposed to be about fun. But of course, when there is a cash prize and, and, and boxes and all kinds of swag and gear and stuff up for grabs, people want that shit. And if they feel like they have been unjustly taken out of the chance to go for that stuff, then some tempers are going to flare. But I have heard that the uh, situation is going to be remedied and some concessions are going to be made and, and it's going to be tried to make right. And that, and that is, and to me, that's what I think ultimately counts. We all fuck up. We all make mistakes. People are fallible. That's what happens. Uh, if you just say, huh, fuck, shit happens, fuck you, and you just go on, uh, that's, that's kind of shitty. But when you're like, ah, damn it, yeah, that... It, it was a it was a it was a mistake you know it's much easier to to say hey fuck we fucked up it was a mistake we can't re we can't rewind time and we can't change the past or anything like that so we're, we'll just we'll, we'll try to make it right with you the best way we can I think that's that's what it comes down to you know sometimes it's not the mistake it's it's just how you deal with the mistake that ultimately makes you a stand-up person or, or a shithead or whatever so <clears throat> but uh, it was a lot of fun. Saw a lot of people there. Um, shout out to uh, Cole uh, that uh, I met on Facebook and stuff. Ended up getting a hold of my uh, low tech mod, the Duke mod, and came out and picked it up. And uh, after some fiddling with it, and which I told him is 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 something you're going to have to expect with uh, custom made you know mods that are not mass produced and all that. When they're hand built, there might be some fiddling you have to do, but uh, we got it working. He was very happy about it. Took a picture with him and everything, and uh, <clears throat> got to talk to a lot of people. My wife was out there helping. They were having a silent auction for to raise money for Safada, and this was a free event. And um, and it was all going great until they kind of hiccup with the fire department. But then a lot of people came back in, and they, for the sake of the community or whatever, they stopped vaping. They let the cloud comp go on, and and uh, I ended up having to leave. But I uh, wasn't able to stay there. But uh, I hear and I've seen that uh, a lot of people really enjoyed it. So um, I got to talk to um, Patrick from Vaping Militia. He lives in Corpus Christi, and he's the president of the uh, uh, Dallas chapter of uh, Vaping Militia. And uh, he, he kind of started touching on a uh, topic that I had brought up in another one of my videos, my first vlog. This is my second. 
talking about vapor on vapor hate and and that's something that i talked about in the other vlog where I, I, I don't know. I don't get the mind. I, I'm just not that kind of person. So it's kind of hard for me to put myself in their shoes where one vapor has feels that they have the authority and the right to tell other vapors what they should be vaping on, how they should vaping, when they should be vaping and all that kind of stuff. And um, I, I call bullshit on that in my first vlog because nobody would take anybody doing that to them. So it's one of these do as I say, not as I do type of things, okay? You know, he was talking about how there's been hate between... He, he's he's a uh, Patrick, speaking from his personal experience, he, is a, he loves his K-Funds and he likes his tank systems and stuff, and he enjoys a dripper every now and then and stuff, and he was... He was uh, posting some products that were that were more in the, I, I almost consider it more conservative vaping style, where you're not looking at huge clouds and you're looking at more um, ultimate, like an exquisite quality of vape versus volume of vapor. You know, speaking of vapor, let me get some real quick. I'm using the uh, Alliance RDA right there on this uh, Hyperion mod, this gold-plated mod, and uh, I'm really digging the uh, really digging the the um, Alliance RDA here. I know there's been a lot of uh, <clears throat> a lot of play about this on the internet and everything like that, and um, got just a just a simple little build on there, and it's been great. I'm dripping some. Uh, Shout out to Pip from uh, Suicide Bunny. She came over yesterday and gave me their line. And uh, I'm dripping some Sucker Punch right now. And I have to admit, I had never really tried any of Suicide Bunny until yesterday. And um, I think it's pretty damn good. I, <laughs> I like it so far. I really like the Sucker Punch. I've got some uh, Mother's Milk on, um, on another Addy over here that I'm going to do a little first impressions on this video with. But uh, yeah, I'm really liking it. I've got the uh, smallest airflow barrel. For those that aren't familiar with the Alliance RDA, it's a it's a um, collaboration between Vaporgate and uh, Fogwind, and they made this uh, alliance together. It's a three-post dripper. It comes with uh, three different barrels, which is how you adjust your airflow. So this is the smallest barrel, and then it comes with gradually larger and a gradually larger barrel for different types of airflow and then you have different you have a 510 drip tip adapter that you can put in or you can go with the chuff style or or whatever and uh just been rocking it like that and it's been performing really well but back to what we was talking about <clears throat> the vapor on vapor hate he was getting some flack from when he was talking about some of these tank systems about how oh, well you're not a real vapor because you don't drip or you know stuff like that oh my god there is no fucking such thing as a real vapor guess what if you vape you're a real vapor okay if you vape and you don't smoke then you're a real vapor there is no fucking classification of what makes you a real vapor all right jesus why does there why is there just this draw in every community that assholes assemble and they just have, I mean, it's, it's like a, you know, it's a Power Ranger fucking thing and they, the assholes have to assemble and, and dog on other people because they want what they want to use. Get, God damn, get down off of your fucking high horses and your soapboxes. You're full of shit. You are absolutely full of shit. If you're one of the people out there that's saying, oh, you're not a real vapor because you don't drip or you're not a real vapor because you don't use the, the K-Fun version 15 with gold plated and platinum contacts and uses, uh, you know, crystal as the glass instead of actual just low grade gloss and all this. To, oh, my God. Or if you're not using a zero mod or you're not using a solid $5,000 silver mod or a gold mod or whatever. Oh, my God. You people. Jesus. If your life is so fucking sad and so fucking shallow that that's what you have to ramble on, damn, I feel sorry for you. That's ridiculous. I have to keep my throat wet for the rant. But um, there, there is, if you vape, you vape. 
I don't, I don't get this. You're not a real vapor if you don't use this. You're not a real vapor if you don't use that. You're not a real vapor if you don't have a hundred grand invested in your vape equipment. You're not a real vapor if you don't drip or you don't build 0.001 ohm coils and and vape at uh, 75 watt, uh, 75 volts, and all this kind of shit. I mean, it's just there is no such. If you vape. Whatever your device, your chosen device is, if you vape, you're a vapor. If you have chosen this nicotine delivery system, or even those out there that use zero nick, and you're just in it for flavor and the feel and, and all that, you're vaping. You're a vapor, okay? Please fucking stop this egotistical fucking desire to bag on somebody else just because they're not using what you prefer to use. Who gives a shit? How does it affect your life? How does it wreck your day-to-day -day life? If I use a dripper or I use a myriad of tanks, I mean, whatever, I could grab one, but whatever, you know, and it's different from what you do. Or I build low, really sub on and you build higher, you know, or you like K funds, or you like replacement coils, or you like tanks with rebuildable decks, or you what, whatever, or you're vaping on a Nautilus tank on a I stick 20 watt, and it'll be the last vape thing you ever need. That's fantastic. Congratulations. Glad that you're vaping and you're not smoking. Okay. All the rest of this shit is just self-imposed bullshit that doesn't matter to anybody but you because you feel the need to... There's something wrong in your life. There's something wrong. That's, that's where this shit comes from. There's something wrong in your life. There's something that's not fulfilled. That's why you have to break down somebody else in order to make yourself feel better. That's what this is all about. That's where that all stems from. Look it up. It's fucking psychology, okay? It, 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 that, it's known. That's where this comes from. So, stop the vapor on vapor hate. Be together in this fight. Be a joined community, a, a solid community, and stop the fighting within. Just like the I did on my last vape on vape hate rant was talking about cloud chasers and cloud comps and the guys were talking about oh it's just a bunch of beer chugging pants sagging gauged out ears tattooed up you know rednecks and blah 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 and that they're ruining it for the vape community because they're blowing all these clouds and i mean yeah there are people out there that are dicks and they'll just you know and they'll just blow vape into people's face and all that kind of shit but that's not the majority that's a very very minority okay so stop, stop the judging, you know. There was a guy, there was a guy at Clouds Over Dallas yesterday wearing a tuxedo. Okay. I mean, that's what I've said. And that's what I was talking about with Patrick. I said the vape community is the only community I have ever seen where you could have a biker sitting at one end and you could have a guy, a, a high-end lawyer in a five thousand dollar armani suit sitting right there and they're swapping vape stories and they're trying each other's gear and they're tasting flavors and all that no no other segment of the population where those two diversely different you know social dynamics would have come together except vaping brought them together so fucking shut up you know fix whatever's wrong with your life that you have to beat down somebody else so that'll be the end of that um legislation and advocacy i want to speak again on that um, some states have been really hit hard um, with legislation and whether that was the vape community didn't step up and do enough to fight it <clears throat> or it didn't matter how hard they fought it was going to go through anyway because the politicians were minds were already made up they had already been bought off whatever and they were going to make the laws and said <clears throat> we've got to keep fighting this guys we have got to. Um, change is hard. Change is always hard. And it's really hard for people to deal with change, especially when you're going against a, a an enemy like Big Tobacco. You're talking about a four or five hundred year old entity. 
okay? They are well established. They are dug the fuck in, okay? Fortresses are built. They've got all their defenses up, and they have shit tons of money to throw, okay? Um, it's a hard fight, you know? We It's it's great that you got into vaping, but like I said, just like the vaping militia said, you made the choice, now stand up for it. We've got to. This cannot be a hot, you know, this can't just be, oh, it's a cool thing to do right now, I'm vaping. You know, it's you got to... You got to stand up and help fight, or this shit's going to go away, and it's going to be made to, or it's going to be created to where it's out of reach of 95% of the people that that did it to get rid of cigarettes, and they're going to have no choice, and everything we love about this is going to go. So you need to get involved in these groups: the Safada, Kasa, Vaping Militia, uh, Truth About Vaping, and and things about that, not blowing smoke. Duck, you know, dot org and stuff, and you've got to get on these with these organizations. Listen to the calls of actions. Take 10, 15 minutes out of your busy fucking day and just send off a note, send off a testimonial, send off a a something to the FDA and things like that. Pay your little twelve dollars a month to Safada. Encourage everyone you know to do it. Go to vape shops and make sure that they're supporting advocacy. That they're not just in it to rake in as much money as possible until it all gets outlawed and they'll go to off to their next money making scheme selling, you know, calf skin ball wallets. I, I don't know what the hell they're gonna do. Whatever the next money making scheme is. And don't give them their business. If they don't wanna they don't wanna support the vaping community, then get them the fuck out of there. And then guess what? Another shop will come in Another owner will find that spot, and then they will support advocacy, and they'll get the they'll get the clue. You know, hey, the reason this other shop went under is because they weren't supporting advocacy, and their business dried up and went away. So I better make sure if I put my shop in there, we are, you know, active in the advocacy in the vaping in the vaping community. Okay, so it's just the simple little choices like that. You know. There's a lot of places you can get your vape equipment from. Bricks and mortars, I love bricks and mortars. I rarely order anything offline. It's it's very rare. Um, and it's, I ultimately only order things online when it is just absolutely not available at any brick and mortar within driving distance of me, okay? Um, but I really love the brick and mortars. And I was talking about this with Roxanne from ECA Vape One uh, out at Clouds Over Dallas yesterday was that, you know, the the hate of people coming into shops and saying, I can, I can, oh, I can get that online for 15 cents or whatever. You know, it's, it, it's really low prices. You have to remember a lot of online vendors and things don't have storefronts. They, they have a minimal staff. Sometimes it's one, two, three people in a, in a home or, or something like that, that place, they, they are the the point of sale, okay, so they, they pay for the up cost of a website or something like that, you know, but that's really low compared to the cost of a brick and mortar. And um, brick and mortar has employees and they're paying insurance and they're paying rent and they're, uh, you know, they have a much higher overhead um, than most online entities. And, uh, yeah, you might be able to find it cheaper online, but if you have a problem with that product, are you gonna you're gonna be able to digitally blast yourself into the computer and go digitally to that place and have it fixed? No. You're what are you gonna do? You're gonna go to a brick and mortar and you're gonna ask the hopefully the experienced staff that works there if they can help you, if they can fix this competitor's product or whatever. But that's the the service that brick and mortars provide. They have, hopefully, the knowledgeable staff in there, unless they're just in there to make a buck, but hopefully they have a knowledgeable staff in there that's really passionate about vaping, they know equipment, they know how things are supposed to work, and they can diagnose and troubleshoot problems that you have. The other benefit to brick and mortars is you can go in and you can put your hands on it. You can see what it feels like, you can look at it, you can all that. You know, there's only so much you can get from looking at a picture on the internet. So brick and mortars serve a purpose. You know, if they weren't there, it, it would possibly just be empty storefront that's not doing anything, that's lowering property values, you know, and they're not paying taxes, they're not contributing. You know, they're putting people to work, they're renting, they're paying taxes, they're putting people to work, and they're, they're in a lot of cases, rejuvenating 
parts of towns and things that have died away some uh, because, like I said, of empty storefronts and stuff. You know, property, it, it's all a big, big chain. It affects everything. You know, if you live in a town and you own a house in this town and you have blocks and blocks and blocks of just vacant storefront, vacant, you know, uh, retail places, it lowers property values. That lower property value translates out into the housing industry too and it lowers their property values and, and everything suffers and then people are taking their business elsewhere. So, um, that's where the, uh, the brick and mortar serve and that's why these brick and mortars and you and everybody needs to, to be joined together in the advocacy fight, okay? We got to. The other side's fighting misinformation, just outright lies, and they've got to be getting the truth somewhere. If they only hear it from one side, then they're going to, in some cases, they're just they're going to do what they feel is in the best interest of everybody else because they haven't heard the other side. Or like I said, if they've already been bought and paid for and, you know, they don't care, hey, we vape, we vote, okay? Get those fuckers out of there. Nothing scares a politician more than knowing that this might be their last chance in office, okay? Their political life is gone because they a lot of them make their whole life out of being a politician. So you threaten their job because we still have a democratic system in most cases, um, <clears throat> and you threaten their job, and there's tens of thousands of vapors, and they're not being listened to, Tens of thousands of votes can definitely sway an election, can definitely dramatically change the outcome of election. So we do have power. We just have to use it. Just like we have power in the U.S. government, we're just not using it. Okay? So, get some more vapor right quick. Anyway, yeah, I'm digging that. Also, well... I did the first little first impression, I guess to get off the rant, did the first little first impression here of the uh, the Alliance RDA. Now, I know this is already out there all over the place. It, it's a really good, um, it's simple. I mean, it's it's a really good three-post stripper. Now, I'm, I'm kind of a, you know, forward-looking guy. I really do like four-post strippers um, because I got lazy. That's the truth. I got lazy. It's so easy to build on a four-post. You know, boop, boop done no bending 45 degrees this way and then 15 degrees this way and centering your coils and all that kind of stuff i just i i have a i'm kind of ocd in the sense where i love centered coils i can't stand when one coil is over here and one coil is over here because i know you can just turn the cap and put your airflow where you want it to go but i don't like that when this coil is over here this bit of cotton is like squee shoehorned in there and then this piece of cotton is long and all i just it's like it doesn't get the same amount of flow juice wise said coal whatever the uh alliance has been really nice i really like it with the smallest airflow button on there and uh <clears throat> the other one i want to show off this is kind of a two-in-one this mangala rda from vapor clouds okay same same maker of the uh the buddha and the, the zephyr buddha v2 and all that which i have one shit i forgot to bring it in here next sunday me and uh, hopefully i think next sunday me and twisted 420 i'm sure most of you know me and him are buddies uh we're going to start doing a lot of dual reviews and what we're kind of doing is uh, like with that zephyr buddha v2 which i got from my buddy damian barnhart who got from anthony um sent me to play around with and do a review of um what we're going to do is i have been using that rda for a week and a half by that time and then i'm going to give my opinion and then i'm going to hand it to richard and he's going to do a first and absolute first draw first impression of it and give his opinion so it's going to be a first impression and a, a use video in one so we're going to start doing that with a lot of products but um this mangala rda which I have just a simple, simple little build on there. 
it uh it's pretty fucking fantastic <laughs> i really like it um the uh it's you know it's it's reduced it's a 30 millimeter or 28 28 millimeter i don't know if it's a true 30 i didn't bring my calipers with me uh or my micrometer or whatever to to measure it but uh And I have the airflow, you have two rows of airflow there, okay? There's your top cap. It is, it is reduced. I mean, it's, it's a cut, it's like a, it's like a Derringer and a, and a, uh, a Buddha got together and had a, a little short fat baby. Um, I've got the airflow, yeah, I've got it all the way open on both sides, but for me, it's just, just the right amount of airflow. And I'm using it on this. Um, it's it's a pretty nice little inexpensive box. It's it's the Pi box from Quailin. Uh, Quailin, I guess you could say. It's got a little potentiometer in there. Goes three to six volts. Has a little readout there. And uh, the insides aren't that clean. The wiring is clean, but when they they put this insulator, see that? See that white stuff? It's not sperm, uh, and it's not cake frosting. That white stuff on there is, it's insulator around the solder is what it is. But they kind of put it on there kind of haphazardly, you know. So it, it kind of looks junky. They, they could have cleaned that up. Let me see if I can, uh, can focus on this a little bit there. Come on. Focus or not or whatever the fuck you want to do. You damn computer. Anyway, um, it... Uh, Actually, let me turn the autofocus off and see if I can. There we go. There we go. See that? Okay. Now, that is insulator or protective coating over the solder and stuff. The rest of the wiring's nice, but the. There we go. The. Um, they kind of haphazardly put that insulator in there. It is a Chinese made box. Um, it's not a Hammond box. It's a it's a milled aluminum box. You can see the milling there. It's uh, what I like the most is that door. See that? There is no move. That door does not move at all. Maybe a m half of a millimeter. Good strong magnets. Four magnets in there. I picked this up from uh, my buddy JT over at Vapor Saloon and uh, been playing with it and um all that it's got some venting down there at the bottom and i've got it turned up to about five volts and it's worked really well i think the box retails for like somewhere between 60 and 70 bucks maybe 75 ish you know um good little three to six volt adjustable you know box a little, little potentiometer there it's been great and i've had the mangle on here and it's been working great um uh i really like i said i really like that mangala that is really nice it's a really really good addy i really enjoyed it really really i'm just gonna keep saying really anyway that's another person i'm using uh some uh like I said suicide money. I'm using some mother's milk on there. I never tried it either, and uh, it's it's pretty damn good. Um, another shout I want to give is to uh, Jennifer Day from Fluffalicious. Okay, I don't see if you can see that name right there. Jennifer Day, the phone number, you can find her on Facebook. Fluffalicious. She came out to uh, I'd seen her on Facebook and got a hold of her, and uh, I don't know if you can see that. That's kind of the let me focus in again there okay there we go that's her flavor profile list there and uh, you can pause that and take a look or you can just go check her out i'll put a link in the video but uh, she came out and dropped out uh dropped off her line she just just kind of went active with this whoop let's get it focused again and uh there's her line and her labels it's a ph balanced juice okay so um it, uh, I've tried a couple of them already, and, and I really like them. My wife tried the, uh, 
what is it, Fluftasia? Yeah, it's a lemon blueberry custard. And uh, she liked it. She used it in a tank. And I've tried the strawberry cream bisque. And uh, it's Fludation. I think that's everything has pH, PHL, you know, in the name. Um, I tried it and I tried the, tried the, um, what was it? Oh, yeah, the um, uh, whipped vanilla custard. And I really liked that one too. So, so far, so good with that. Wanted to give a shout out to her for bringing that out. Um, another one, another juice, and I left the bottle in outside. Uh, End of the Road. End of the Road juices. You can look them up. Uh, he gave me one that was kind of a French vanilla and butterscotch last night at uh, uh, Clouds Over Dallas. And it tastes pretty good. I'm supposed to get a hold of him uh, on Facebook and he's gonna he's going to give me the rest of his line uh, and I still want to shout out to uh, to Apex they've got some new labels this is their old label but Apex from Vapor Saloon in uh, in uh, Greenville Texas and you can still go on there uh, look up their juices Vapor Saloon and uh, if you use Vaping Vigilante when you check out, you get $5 off per bottle. And I think that they have extended that offer till July 30th. And it's per bottle. It's not the whole order. It's per bottle. And uh, I'm still making my way through all their juices. But I've liked... My favorite with them is Siren Sin. Um, and it's delicious. And I really like uh, the Caribou. I really like the Draco. I like... Um, there's been several of them that I really like. And shout out to them again, JT and uh, Aaron over there at Vapor Saloon. Get some more drink. But like I said, I don't want to make this one as long as it's been before. Um, upcoming things, some more products. The uh, the Hyperion, I'm going to do a review of, and I've got the Dripper uh, that hybrids to it as well. This nice little gold plated dripper that goes on to it as well that hybrids right now I have the 510 connection on there so I can use the uh, use whatever Addy I choose um, I've got uh, I'm going to do a review of that pie box and I'm going to got a FNJ coming up that I'm going to do a review on and um, silver plated flu Foo Hatton I'm going to do a review on that a buddy of mine used yesterday in a cloud comp and uh, the the uh, petri mod, I know it's already been done, but I'm I'm gonna do my own review on it. I've got um, a box coming from. I've got the. What's really cool is um, Ivago is coming out with an Addy called the Evil Monk, and it's a postless Addy. And they are. Uh, I guess we're there. Ivago is coming out with this postless Addy called the Evil Monk. And the way it works is your coils, the deck is completely flat. No posts, no nothing. Your coils go down into the deck. You pull the oil, you pull the airflow control ring off. There's grub, grub screws or grub, nut, whatever the fuck they're called. They go into the deck. That's how you tighten your leads up. For your air hole. They have airflow coming up underneath. They've got these holes coming up underneath where your airflow comes in uh, or it comes, I think it comes down and in. That way it doesn't leak, of course. I have to get it. The, the pictures kind of don't do it justice. I'm going to get it. I've got two of them coming. One for me and one for Richard. And um, they're coming. I've got a uh, mod coming, another mod coming out of the Philippines called the Pistolette. The Pistolette mod. They hooked, they hit me up on Facebook Asked me if I wanted to review one of their mods. I picked it's an 88 uh, watt variable wattage device, um, and it's kind of it's in kind of a pistol type of grip um, fire button up front right here, and it comes in a variety of colors. It, everything from like a, a pink digi, digi type of camo to a, a blue and and blue digi, and then they have. Uh, a desert camo kind of one. They have um, a slick silver one. I chose the carbon fiber one. And then they have some wood, uh, wood finished ones that, that look really nice. So I'm going to get that and that's coming up as well. Um, got some, hopefully, 
here before too long I'll have another box from Damien Barnhart of Sub Omen Box Mods. He's making a new box called the Cerberus box, which is a lipo box. He's making uh, me one and he's making Richard one. Richard's going to, we're going to do a dual review of that. But what, what it's going to be is it's going to be the same box with two different power options because you can just get a different LiPo battery and put it in there and you can get different operating ranges on your voltage. Um, he's going to use the more powerful one. I'm going to use the more conservative 12 volt one. Um, but uh, that's coming up and um, looking forward to that. Uh, hopefully I'll be getting a released version of the, uh, the uh, uh, Zephyr Buddha V2. Uh, I've posted pictures up on my Vaping Vigilante page on Facebook and on my my Facebook, Jason Johnston. And um, I've got, a, like I said, the review of that's coming up next week, me and Richard. And um, so, yeah, there's there's some things going on. There's some things coming up. I'm getting a hold of a few modders, and hopefully they're going to uh, be giving me some boxes to review. Um, talked to Sean Bass from Mystery Box yesterday out at uh, Clouds Over Dallas, and he showed me his new milled box that is fucking awesome dude it's really really nice um the the milling on it is really cool it's it's milled out of a block of aluminum he's the switch on it is so fucking i think he called it, it's a 12 millimeter switch or something like that but it's just a, a very little timing tiny little click button on it. it's almost flush and uh the performance is excellent on it so i'm, I'm trying to he think i think think most of his boxes are counted for in the mill, but he's going to try to, to weasel me one out of that um, if, if he can. And uh, really look forward to that. That's a series box. And uh, so, yeah, things coming up. Getting close to uh, or getting closer to 1,000 subscribers. So thank you, everybody out there that's uh, been subscribing and watching. I haven't been putting out as, out as many videos lately because I've had some some uh, personal issues and, and things like that and it, it just it had I hadn't uh, I've been kind of concentrating on those and I haven't done as many videos lately sorry for that I've got more coming up um, sometimes just life gets in the way and uh, I've got to get some things settled down in my life so I can do this more uh, more regularly than I have been but I want to thank everybody out there for still supporting me and stuff um, my last couple of this this one in my last video hasn't been any intro or music or anything like that. I'm I, you know I'm kind of just going back to something really simple. You know I don't need I don't really need the flash and the music and the graphics and all that. That's that's uh, nothing against anybody that does. It's just it's I was kind of doing it more because a lot of the other big reviewers were doing it. But you know I want to just kind of I want to stay more of the I don't know, almost poor man's reviewer of sorts. You know, I'm just a regular guy in Texas supporting a family and and a married man and and all that. And I'm just I'm a very simple person, so I want to I want to make my videos simple and easy to understand. So there won't be uh, I don't think I'm going to do any more of the intros and, and things like that. I'm just going to throw the video up and you like it if you like it and you don't you don't. So what? I don't care. You know, I'm doing this because I'm I'm passionate about it. And I love giving information. I love gear and I love community and I love the vape world. So um, you know, that's that's why I'm doing this stuff. Yeah, I like that mother's milk. Yeah, I do. It's pretty, pretty good. Pip said, she, I said, I had never tried suicide bunnies. And she goes, well, I'm about to change your life. And I was like, okay, you know, that's good. She's, she's a sweet, sweet little girl. Not girl, woman. She's, she's a, she's a lovely woman. And, um, so far she's been right. I've really liked it. But, um, like I said, I'm going to do, uh, I've got, um, on the, uh, Jennifer gave me some samples of, uh, Fluffalicious to give away. And I don't know if I'm going to do that online or if I'm gonna just hand them out to people as I see them and stuff but uh, go check her out and um, she is I'll put a link but uh, on it's facebook.com fluffalicious that's p-h-l-u-f-f-a-l-i-c-i-o-s okay fluffalicious let me uh, let me zoom in again there 
see if you can see that. Get a little bit, there we go. Jennifer Day, get out of the name. Fluffalicious, pH balanced vaping fluid. Jen Day Cattle Mills at yahoo.com. There's her phone number and all that. Go check her out. And uh, she's got quite a few, quite a few flavors, as you can see there. Okay. So she's got plenty to choose from. And there, a lot of them are really cool flavors. Um, fresh blue grape pineapple, I'm guessing. Why oh, did I didn't focus that back? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, she's got one called Catadu, and I'm guessing that's kind of like a, a, a it's a melon, of course. Uh, I'm thinking cantaloupe and uh, honeydew, Catadu. Uh, fresh frosty palm melon, so I'm guessing that's kind of a, a culotta, uh, pomegranate melon flavor. Uh, frozen palm berries, okay. Fresh peach berry. Um, fresh, uh oh, I didn't print very well. Let's see what that one is. Uh, but dun, 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 dun. Cataberry. So I'm guessing that's cantaloupe and berry. The fluffinator. The fluffinator. Um, strawberry cream bisque. Funnel cake with chocolate drizzle. That's the freaky. Uh, the lemon blueberry custard. Uh, fluffernut. Hazelnut cream brulee. Apple cinnamon muffin. Whipped vanilla custard. Yeah. So. Got some interesting flavors there. Um, I'm also going to do a review of the Twisted Messes RDA is coming up. Um, what else was there? What else was there? Oh, I might be getting my uh, hands on a new Sub-Zero mechanical mod from sub -Ohm Innovations, which looks really interesting. I really want to try one out because it looks really cool. They're, they're firing button and all that. They've done some really different stuff in there. And uh, I really want to check that out as well. So um, yeah, that's that's about it. That's about all I got to talk about today. See, we're running at about 46 minutes right now. So with that, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support. Hopefully we'll keep growing. And as long as I keep giving you what you're looking for, uh, remember, Vaping Vigilante, and vape it like you stole it. I'll see y'all later.